My first computer was an Ohio Scientific Superboard 2, which cost $279 and I bought it in 1978. At the time I was making $2.50 an hour, so you can imagine, that's well over 100 hours more if you take the taxes out, which they did even back then. Well, the features of that computer were pretty punk by today's standards, but they were really neat in that day. The Superboard 2 had a 6502 microprocessor, 4K of static RAM. It had video, which it says here was 30 by 30, but it was actually less displayed on the screen. It had a cassette port, and it had composite video out. It came with Microsoft Basic and ROM, and pretty much was everything you see in the picture here. The keyboard was included, and it was really, for me, my first personal computer, and probably for a lot of other people. The same computer was the core of the BBC computer. Unfortunately, I don't think I took a picture of the computer, but this is the kind of case that I built. I had a wooden case. It probably didn't look nearly as nice as this, but it certainly was serviceable and usable as a computer. I used it all the way through college. Well, maybe a little past college even, I think until I got my first IBM PC clone. And it, it definitely was better than sitting on punch cards in the computer lab. A buddy of mine and I did our senior project together for our electrical engineering program, and we used the computer as the basis of our design. We built a terminal multiplexer that had four serial communications ports and multiplexed it down to one single higher speed port, uh, kind of a terminal multiplexer for the day. And we were able to use the expansion connector on the superboard to do our development. One of us developed the CPU side, which was basically cloning the Superboard CPU, and the other one uh, built the hardware for the I.O. That was a really neat basis for a project and having that computer with expansion hardware support on the inside of it certainly gave us a leg up on a project. I remember our senior advisor telling us there was no way we could do it in the amount of time we had and we accomplished it early and it worked great. So one day, feeling nostalgic, I wondered what it would take to rebuild that original computer. I'd thrown it out, oh, probably 15 years ago when I moved, and uh, really started to feel that nostalgic feeling and wanted to play with the old hardware. But there was nothing around to do it with, and then I tripped across Grant Searle's page on the internet. The coolest part is Grant had built that same project into an FPGA. So using Grant's design, I built a card to mount the FPGA under and built the different options that he had all the way up into the CPM machine running on a Z80 and along the way made the 6809 work and the 6502 and found my Superboard 2 clone and it just really, really worked well. So going all the way up to the Cyclone 4 card is a natural next step. It, after all, it has the serial to USB interface built on, it has the PS2 keyboard built on, and it has a video jack. Now the only complication here is Grant's video output is a composite video, and this particular card has a VGA connector. I could probably use the summing network that's on the VGA connector and drive the different bits with the right voltage to get it to work, um, and probably sh shove the uh, sync on one of the bits and maybe make green into the output bit. But I thought I would just uh, take one of the spare cards I had left over from when I built the first Grant project uh, design and use that for my connections for outputs. The connections are really pretty simple. All, all that it takes is a ground for the shell or shield of the cable and two resistors, a four point, or 470 ohm resistor and a 1K resistor to sum together the video and the sync. And that's all you really need to do to drive it out of Grant's code. This is the card with those two resistors and the cable on it. And here are the connections to the FPGA card. Notice that they go into pins that would go to the VGA, but since the VGA is unused, there's not a conflict in this case. The PS2 pins are left open to go to the PS2 on the other side of the card. So how did it work? Does it bring up the classic Segmon prompt? It works great. And notice how much RAM, 16K. Wow, I would have been in heaven back in the day with that much memory. 
very cool. A welcome enhancement that Grant has done is to make 48 column wide video. Boy, that sure would have been a lot nicer than the 20 or 24 characters I had on my little 5 inch black and white television. If you want some more details about this particular implementation, you can watch our other videos that we did, our original FPGA retro computing videos, and they cover the board in quite a bit more detail. This, it's all the same at this point, it's just running on different hardware. Thanks for walking down nostalgia lane with me. Hopefully you have your own nostalgia and you can build something that scratch, scratches that edge from back in the day. Anyhow, have a great day. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products, and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.